All right, so this is the first page uh, I have filled for your reference. So you can insert the name of the ship, all different information which can be readily available from the uh, ship particulars. So you can easily fill much of the information on page number one using the ship particulars and the general details of the vessel. So here it is important that uh, the grain loading booklet is uh, approved by the classification society and on behalf of uh, the flag state. Uh, the drawing number of the grain stability booklet needs to be mentioned and along with uh, the, the, the date of approval which is normally given by the ves uh, vessels grain stability booklet first page where the stamp of the class is there. Also the applicable regulations so I have mentioned it now this regulation will be given to you in the grain stability manual itself whereby it was it will be written on the first or the second page that which all regulation comply to this vessel then you can mention the loading port the bunkering port and the discharge port in this case i have not taken any bunkering port so the loading port is let's say port alpha and the discharge port is let's say port bravo not charlie port bravo because i'm not taking any bunkering port so this is by mistake i've written all right. One thing important is that here it is given addendum for untrimmed and approved by. So this is normally not applicable to uh, the vessel which we are taking into consideration. So if it is, then in that case you will be having a separate drawing on board where it will be shown to you that the untrimmed ends are also approved by the administration. Where by it is very unlikely that you will get it on a ship where which is a dedicated grain carrier and uh, or which is having a document of authorization in case if you are not authorized to carry grain uh, you may be having a separate drawing uh, or approval date for uh, doing this thing and that information can be inserted over here all right continuing we need to mention the daily consumption of the fuel like i said it's so you can insert all the information uh, this all can be inserted using the ship particulars or the capacity or the dead weight uh, plan or the general particulars of the vessel you can get this information almost everywhere on the ship followed by you have to write the name of the chief officer and sign it uh, and uh, similarly on the right hand side the master and the ncb surveyor will sign it so the first page is very much clear and can be filled up easily okay let's move on to the second page moving on uh, so this is the part one that is page number two of the ncb form so i've filled this up for your reference the type of grain is wheat which we are loading the storage factor is 1.170 in meter cube per metric ton and 42 in cubic feet long ton i have um, taken an example of a panamax carrier with seven holes so i have uh, loaded in all the holes the wheat cargo same cargo so the sf remains same the total grain cubics of the hole is given by this value can be taken by the general particulars of the capacity plan of the ship the used values can be taken by the uh, the departure loading condition which can be seen from here so in this case you have how much volume of the grain is occupied so you can check from here okay so this same value we have to put in the ncb form all right so so the weight of the cargo is also given in the low decatur report you can take it from there all right very convenient no rocket science now comes the kg values so kg values can be again taken from the low decatur report so this is the vcg column and this is the cargo hold so in the column it is already given the vcg value or the kg values of all the cargo holders in the loading condition so you can pick up the values from here and put it in the ncb form so i've put it for your reference and finally the moment which is generated by the cargo hold it is not by the cargo okay uh, the cargo hold moment that is the healing moment is a different concept that we will be dealing in another part of the ncb form but as of now it is the moment which is generated by the cargo hold okay so in this case the cargo hold is generating a vertical moment corresponding to these values so we will just pick up these values and put it in the ncb form fair enough let's move ahead here i have 
used the metric unit so I have ticked this the cargo totals is the the column total which will come over here that is how much cargo I'm loading which is 79,218 the light ship of the ship and the constant value and also I've mentioned the um, vertical center of gravity or the kg values which is being generated by individual uh, like light ship as well as constant which again can be taken easily from the loadicator report followed by the moments that is the vertical moments which are being generated by different different entities so again I have taken this thing by simple addition using the loadicator report and finally it says the ship and the cargo totals which is a total displacement followed by the total moment that is a total vertical moment being generated by the ship so very simple thing as of now we have used the loadicator report to pick up the information and punch in the NCB form okay so let's move ahead comes the that small storage distribution the ship shape whereby we need to show the uh, distribution of cargo in various holds so I have mentioned like cargo number one two three four and five six seven and uh, all these are full except number three which is a slack hole but all are trimmed obviously we cannot leave the cargo untrimmed it has to be trimmed properly by the terminal and followed by the quantities I have also shown the location of the engine room and the four peak tank in the forward okay so very easy it is just similar to the storage plan which you make on the ship or the final storage plan for that matter okay let's move ahead all right so coming to page number three part two that is a fuel and water calculation whereby as you can see that I have uh, given the tank distribution of all the liquid carrying tank that is the water as well as the oil followed by the weight which is being occupied and the kg and the moment being generated by all the tanks also followed by the free surface moment as I'm not taking any bunkers uh, in the intermediate port uh, so there is no basically as I'm not taking any bunkers or doing any ballasting deballasting in between so I don't have any uh, intermediate uh, data entry for the intermediate port okay followed by the arrival port which is Bravo like I said and the weight distribution is already given over there X and the change in the uh, weight is being shown for number one fuel oil tank and number two number three port and starboard fuel oil tank and some change in number five DOT so whatever the change in my tanks are so this is what I have punched in over here and uh, whatever is whatever is the resultant free surface moment I have updated over here so as you can see there is no intermediate condition which is happening in this so that's why I've kept only to alpha and bravo condition that is departure port and the arrival port so from where are you getting all these values of uh, the weight VCG moment and free surface moment let's go to the loading report again and you can check it from here the fuel oil tank condition that is a weight of the tanks also followed by the uh, kg also followed by the vertical moment being generated by the tank and also the free surface moment okay so fair enough uh, there is no uh, no confusion in this and similar is the case with the diesel oil tank and also with the fresh water tank I think fresh water tank is on top yeah over here okay so now it's pretty good to go you just have to pick up the values and insert in the NCB form all right okay so let's move ahead like I said similar is the case with the arrival uh, Bravo condition so you can pick up the arrival loadicator report and take up the values from there and punch it in what is important is that you should be very sure about the uh, the voyage you have to study the whole voyage that we're all what kind of uh, um, change in the tank condition will be involved and that is where you have to do a proper meeting especially with chief engineer whereby uh, what is his plan with the bunker management on board uh, till the arrival port that which all tanks will be empty and which all tanks will be full and uh, are, are we taking any bunkers or not so everything needs to be like uh, uh, spick and span and on, on, on the paper that uh, you should have an idea about the complete voyage and the weight distribution that's what is the crux of the grain loading is all right moving down in the same page 
you can see that I have totaled all the liquids, the weight of the liquids, the moments which are being generated by that, and also the free surface moment. And the similar is the case with the arrival condition, whereby I have totaled all the values and kept it. You can always check in the in your Lodicator report, and you will come to a conclusion that all these values add up. The sailing draft needs to be mentioned over here. That is 14.49 meters, which is the summer draft and our density 1.0 to 5. Now you can check that the departure kg is 10.9 and the arrival kg is 11.01. .01. So I will take up only the departure condition. Arrival condition you can figure out yourself where I'm taking the uh, values from because the departure and the arrival conditions format is same. All right, so departure kg is easy to find out, which is given in the Lodigate report as well. So if you can see the departure kg is 10.9 here, that is VCG, it's 10.9. So you have to take it as it is and you have to punch it in the NCB form. The free surface correction given is 0 0.06. So you will be adding it up with the kg. So the free surface correction is given like G as GGO and that is 0 0.06 in this case. Okay, so the vertical correction, we are not taking into account because this is not applicable to our ship. Okay, and uh, the departure kg is then 10.96. The departure km is also given in the Lodigator report, which is 13.65. So you can take it from here and uh, put 10.96 as the KGV and the departure GM comes out to be 2.69 which is the corrected GM while the minimum required GM as per the grain stability criteria is 0.3 meters. So in this case the departure stability is there that means the vessel is complying with only one part of the grain stability criteria which is the GM part. Okay since we don't have any intermediate change of cond condition we will ju directly jump to the arrival condition and uh, you can see that in a similar way we have got an arrival GM of 2.53. All right, moving on to the part three and uh, this is one of the most important part and in this we have to show the healing moment calculation of the cargo holds whereby what is the healing moment which is generated by the grain loaded in those compartments. So this is what it caters to in this uh, we have got like seven holes and uh, the stowage condition is only partially filled for number three rest all are full and trimmed so in this i have mentioned the depth of the uh, grain allege or the depth the so depth is 10.2 meter it's an appro approximate uh, depth which can be easily found out by using the stowage factor and the volume of the compartment so you can really easily come to know that what is the approximate height of the cargo which will be reached or visualize it uh, using the markings which is given in the uh, cargo holes. And most of the cargo holes now have got visual markings so you can take it from there once the cargo is loaded. So now comes the volumetric healing moment part and it is a very important part that how do you determine it because it is normally not given in the Lodicator report. The Lodicator report will only give you the total healing moment like you can see here on the right hand side. So but it might not give you the volumetric healing moment. The volumetric healing moment needs to be manually found out from the grain stability booklet. and. If you remember, I have already discussed in my previous blog on the website that how do you calculate the healing moments, that is the volumetric healing moments for the cargo compartments. In case you have forgotten it or need to refresh your memory, you can always uh, reach out the link which I have provided in the description below. Click it and you will be referred to my blog. Thereby you can see the detailed process of how to go about calculating the volumetric healing moment. Moving on, uh, the next column is the SF or the density of the cargo. I've mentioned over here the, the SF of the cargo, uh, followed by the grain healing moment, which can be directly picked up from the Lodicator report. Or if you have found out 
the volumetric healing moment from the grain stability book you can always multiply it by the factor and reach out to the same value and you can compare it with the load indicator value all right so moving on you have to total out the volumetric healing moment followed by the grain healing moment you have to total it out over here and write it down all right so i have mentioned the stability summary as well what is the displacement of the ship what is the arrival displacement of the ship the gm the total grain healing moment and the maximum allowable grain healing moment so as you can see we have completed the ncb form in all the four pages uh, without much of an hassle the only thing which you need to make sure is to enter the volumetric healing moments and that can be easily calculated using the grain stability booklet and that i have already covered in my blog rest everything can be filled up very conveniently using the load indicator report uh, so this was it and you can see that filling up ncb form is very convenient provided you have all the data handy important is uh, to gather the understanding of the concept and more importantly the source of information i would highly recommend you to be familiar with the grain stability booklet uh, on board it is of utmost importance simply because uh, different shipyards have different ways of presenting the information and if you're not aware of same this may cause last minute hassles we can clearly see that the filling up of ncb form is not that difficult important is that you have access to information and most importantly you should know where to obtain the information from so do send in your comments or other queries in case you have any write to us at ask at the rate final to tunnel dot com and we shall be happy to help see you next time till then stay safe